What's up guys, Multiprops here. Here just do a quick build on this new frame. It's the uh, Lizard 180 by King Don FPV. I actually designed this frame about a year ago and uh, cut it on my CNC machine, but I don't have the means to cut it in carbon, so I've been flying it with a HDPE bottom frame, which was just too flimsy with the new 4S setups. Um, so, guys over at King Don FPV contacted me and really liked the frame and wanted to start producing it, so I figured I'd just do a quick build video on it. It's a 180mm wheelbase frame. Um, some cool features on it, it's a uh, low pro or low ride uh, plate setup. That way you have plenty of room for a full size um, CCD camera up front, whether it's a HS1177 or a, uh, any, any, any CCD in that size. Also, this gives a good place for your battery to mount and it keeps your center of gravity nice and low. Um, have cutouts here on the sides, as you can see, for uh, your battery strapped around to keep it in place. Also have a spot in the back for your, uh, for your antenna to come up through if you choose to use that. And then these two little slots right here, I put those there so you can put a zip tie through there and connect your antennas from your, uh, what I like to use is FR Sky. So you know, you could put your zip ties on there, put your antennas on it, and shrink it. That way you get a nice, uh, nice true diversity with your antennas so they're not too close to each other. But yeah, I guess I'll go over some of the parts we've used on the build. Um, I mostly recommend keeping 1806, 1804 size motors on this. A lot of people do like running 22 size motors. I like the 18s because it's a little lighter, the way you get a little bit better efficiency and uh, you still get great thrust on the 4S. It's, it's still more than enough for doing acro and uh, some racing. But yeah, I'll show you the parts I'm using. First off, you'll get the frame and three plates. You got the bottom plate here. This is four millimeter, 3K carbon fiber. Very nice, very, very strong. Just almost no flex whatsoever in it. Um, one cool thing that I added to it was recessed holes. So there's your motor slots. Everything is recessed down so you get a nice flush finish once your motor screws are in and your standoff screws are in. Even with all the standoffs, everything is, is recessed. Alright, next piece you get will be, I guess, uh, the battery plate. Uh, this is again 3K carbon fiber, it's uh, 1.5 millimeter, still very very strong, nice quality carbon. And finally you get your uh, your top plate, this is the one that's all the way up front that goes over top of your, uh, your CCD camera, protect that. And also I have a little cutout here, that way just in case you guys uh, like to run those crazy camera angles, you know 30, 40, 45 degree camera angles. Gives a little bit of room for the lens to come up through so you don't see anything in your uh, field of view. Right, moving on, I'm going to be using, let me uh, focus up a little bit here. I'm going to be using these 1806. I get it from uh, Paul at Ready to Fly Quads. Uh, cheap stuff, always had good luck with them. These are very nice motors, relatively cheap. I think they were $14 a piece. So you see hollow shaft, NTM bearings, very, very smooth, and very light. As far as a flight controller, this is, I'm just using kind of what I have laying around. This is the same one I ran on my old setup. This is just a F1 board, NACE32 again from Paul, ready to fly quads. Good board. Um, another thing you're going to need is some wires, because we're going to have to, we're going to have to extend uh, the power leads to the ESC. Make sure when you get wire, if your ESC's wires aren't long enough, you get something that's silicone wire, nice and soft. It really, it really helps a lot. It doesn't stress and fatigue and break. All right. Uh, next thing I'll be using is a D4 or two. Again, sorry, this was in another build, so it's already been uh, the cardboard cut off of it and shrink wrapped. And I have my wires here set up so I can run PPM instead of having all the wires running to the flight controller. As far as a VTX, again from Paul, I got it. This is the 
FX 799T 200 milliwatt. I've had great luck with these. Nice and cheap, very easy to use. Have a connector on the bottom to run your uh, your power in and your uh, signal and power over to your your CCD camera. Also, nice features it has this little button here, just like a lot of them out on the market now. Allows you to switch through your uh, your channels very easily. I don't know if I can get this. Uh, probably yeah, it's not going to show up. But this does run all the channels A, B, C, D, E, and uh, race channel. And all these little LEDs will light up corresponding on which one you're running. Again, very easy to use. Um, as far as a PDB for the build, I'm going to be using this uh, Blue Sky that I got off of Amazon. Uh, it was cheap. It was two of them for $10. Uh, you have all your power here. You have your XT60 connector here. Gives it a nice, nice clean solid mount to go to and it really helps clean up the builds on, on smaller quads. And this also has a 12 volt and a 5 volt out which comes in handy for grabbing power for your uh, your VTX and also for powering your flight controller. Alright, next is uh, hardware. Uh, you have options here. Uh, you can use aluminum mounts or you can keep it simple and just use your nylon standoffs. Sometimes the nylon standoffs come in handy because depending on your skill level and how tight you can build things, you can make this bottom plate taller or shorter, and that way it gives you the option to cut these to whatever size you want. Um, I like it nice and low, but it does complicate the build a little bit, but it's it's really worth it in the end. All right, uh, well, next we'll move on to uh, setting up the motors and your ESC setup. I already stripped these and tinned these because, I again, I had these on the build already. Um, I cut the leads to about 20 millimeters, stripped a small section, and tinned it with solder. And with the ESC, I went ahead and uh, cut off the heat shrink and uh, desoldered the power wires. I'm doing that because mine were already very short. Uh, if you're buying new ESCs, you shouldn't have to do that because they already should be long enough, but I'm just showing you anyway. And again, if you do have to do that, make sure you use soft silicone wire. I'm using uh, 18 gauge in this. 18 or 16 would be fine. Um, next thing is make sure you have a, a decent soldering iron. I really recommend running a wider tip, kind of like a shovel nose. That way you can distribute the, uh, the heat much faster and quicker. The idea is when you're working on these small electronics, you do not want to keep heat on there too long. So it's kind of good to go in quick and get out. I'm running my soldering iron at uh, 350, just to give you an idea of what I'm using. Alright, so let's uh, start soldering these guys on. Again, just working from one side to the next. Um, sometimes it does help to have your solder ready and to just pre-tin your, uh, your soldering iron. That helps, again, distribute the, uh, the heat better. So just get just get a little bit on the, the tip there and then you just want to do one at a time you want to make sure that the solder looks nice and clean and shiny that tells you that you have a good solid joint and you won't have to worry about um, getting any cold solder joints and having problems down the road let's get a little bit more on here Sorry, it's a little harder to do this on camera. All right. So as you can see, all the shiner joints. <laughs> Sorry. As you can see, all the joints are nice and shiny. No roughness to it. Nice and smooth. Tells you that you have a nice clean joint. Uh, again, next, this is only if you need to extend your wires, or in my case, you're using older ESCs. First thing you want to do is uh, strip a little bit of the ends. Don't need much. Just a little bit there. I always like to twist it together. Do that for both. And what I like to do is I get some, get some solder paste and just 
just dip it in there and just get a little bit of solder on it. That's going to help the uh, the solder take to the ESC much better, or to the wire, sorry, much better. So let's get this set up here. And what I like to do is I'll just like to kick the solder up a little bit, apply the heat, and then just make sure it all sucks onto the wire nice and smooth, nice and clean. Again with the other one. Now that's that's done. Move that out of the way. You can bring back in the uh, the ESC. Oh, sorry. Two reds isn't going to help us too much. Get some black in here and cut it to the same length as the as the red. Then again, do the same as the other. Strip a little piece off. Dip it in the flux. Solder over. And make sure you got a generous amount on there. All right, now we're ready for the ESC. And again, you can look on most ESCs and you can see where the negative and positive. Obviously, you don't want to get this mixed up or uh, you want to see some magic smoke, which you do not want to see. So again, get a little bit of solder on there. Go in with the heat and come out with it as quick as you can so you don't keep that heat on that PCB board too long. Alright, then you're good to go there. Next thing is get yourself a piece of heat shrink. Make sure that it's <clears throat> wide enough to fit over your speed controller. Cut it. Uh, it's as simple as feeding your wires through there. Because we're building on carbon fiber, you got to really make sure that you don't have any ground or power touching that carbon. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. Don't ask me how I know. So then just get a heat gun or uh, a lighter, whatever you have handy, and shrink this down. There you go. Now you have no exposed joints. Don't have to worry about any power ground hitting the, uh, the carbon fiber frame. Now you want to go ahead and repeat that four more times and then we'll move on to the next step. <clears throat> Alright guys, as you see I skipped ahead a little bit. Just don't want to make this video too long. I got all four of the SCs finished just like the first one I showed you. Went ahead and mounted them to the frame with their included hardware. And a uh, big thing a lot of people forget is anytime you have a metal to metal connection, always use blue Loctite. Always. Otherwise, you're going to have motors fall off, sand dolls fall off midair. Don't want that. Uh, also, added in some of the, uh, the standoffs. I got the, uh, the shorter guys in the back. And up here, the ones I'm using right now, these are 20 millimeters. And the front ones, I think, are 30 millimeters. Yeah, let me double check. But these will be included in the, uh, in the, in the uh, package when you get them. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure whether they're going to be coming with aluminum standoffs or nylon. Nylon might be a bit easier, a bit lighter. Um, it's going to be easier, like I said earlier, to where you can decide what length you want these depending on how tall or low 
this battery plate's going to be in the end. It's very nice with the low, but it, like I said, you have to take a few other extra steps to keep it that low. One of them being not being able to use any of the, uh, the servo connections, because there just won't be enough uh, room to put the plugs on the, uh, the FC. Alright, so next step is going to be getting your PDB mounted up, power distribution board. I went ahead, did a little bit more work on this guy, let me focus this in. As you can see, I already pre-tinned all the, uh, the positives and the negatives, and also pre-tinned the, uh, the 12 volt out and the 5 volt out, and connected my, uh, my uh, XT60 connector. Um, because of this frame, if you see when you lay it where the holes are, it does overhang onto this arm. So what I did is I just clipped the uh, the excess uh, XT60 sticking out of here off, cleaned them up after I soldered them, and just put a little bit of electrical um, liquid electrical tape. All right. So next step you're going to do you're going to get four screws. These will not be included in the kit. I am using 15 millimeter M3 screws. I'm going to go ahead and stick those through the recessed holes in the bottom. <clears throat> and go ahead and flip that back. Oop, I knew that was going to happen. Let's just do one at a time. Put that guy through there, and then I made these spacers. Now these spacers, you could do it with a lot of different things. I happen to have these little three mil uh, plastic uh, nylon spacers here. So I just cut really thin ones. I'm putting those on first because, again, we don't want that power distribution board to be hanging, um, hanging up are sitting on top of the carbon fiber. Don't want any chances of a short. Sorry, some of this isn't in the camera. Do that to all four. I cut these spacers out. It's all going to depend on the power di power distribution board you're using. But mine are about, I don't know, a millimeter thick. put those guys on and once we have that then we can grab our power distribution board go ahead and slide that on there and then as you can see it's going to create just a little gap underneath there that way nothing is touching that carbon after that Got a few more here. Well, actually, we'll hold off on putting. Well, I'll show you anyway. Got a few more here that are a little longer that we're going to put on top of those. This is going to be here to keep the uh, the flight controller up off the power distribution board again, having enough room to where none of the components on the bottom of the flight controller are going to be touching any of the components on top of the power distribution board. So we'll get those on there. That way it's going to hold everything into place. And when you see, once you put this guy on here, you have plenty of clearance between everything and nothing is touching. I'll leave you enough room because we're going to be cutting these, these power cables to length and while we're soldering onto the PDB. Alright guys, go ahead and do one of these ESCs. So you can attach these to the, the arms many different ways. I just like to use double sided tape. So put a little piece on there, peel that off, just stick that guy down right there. Alright, don't need the, the ESC wire for now. And let's, uh, let's cut these to length, get these soldered on. So basically just go to your, every PDB will be different. That's about where I want my hot side, I mean my uh, positive side. 
strip that off. Tin that guy real quick. Get that guy on there. All right. I repeat the same with your negative sign. Looks good to me. Again, I'm not uh, claiming to be a professional builder. But uh, just try to give you guys a few tips if you've never done it before. If you have, all this will be very simple for you. Get the negative lined up. Same thing, since both sides are pre tin, goes on nice and easy. All right, well that's one done, and I'll go around and do the other four, and then we'll uh, go to the next step. Alright, so as you can see guys, I went ahead and jumped forward a little bit because I don't want this video to be too long. <clears throat> went ahead and finished soldering up the other three ESCs to the power distribution board like I showed you with the first one. Also connected uh, a positive and negative to the 5 volt rail to supply power to our, uh, to our flight controller. And the 12 volt rail I went ahead and ran out to the uh, connector for my VTX. And also installed my... This is a PZ0420M camera removed from the housing and I just 3D printed a little mount here. Um, I will share the files if anybody has a 3D printer and wants to print it. Um, yeah, so I just want to skip ahead so it saves us time. Everything's all hooked up. I uh, updated my ESCs and flashed them through the BL Heli Suite. So they're up to their newest firmware. And in there I also changed the rotation of the motors. That way these two front are spinning inward towards the front and the two back are spinning inwards like this towards the back end. Um, then I also updated my flight controller to the newest version of Betaflight. You can run Betaflight, Clean Flight, Race Flight, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so that's pretty much it. Next step is I also connected my VTX to the underside of the battery plate. So what I'm going to do first just plug this plug into my VTX so that will get power. Set this guy down here and then um, have these screws right here. Again, M3. Biggest thing I didn't mention this on the build yet is, I think I did actually, everything use blue Loctite. Any metal on metal connection, do it. So, that's the wrong size, there it is. So what I normally do is put a dab on the table, you don't need a ton. Get that in there and screw it down. With these screws, a lot of people like to go crazy tight. It's really not necessary. Just get it snug. That blue Loctite will hold the screws in position. Tighten that guy down. Kidding. Don't want these in here. I'll show you why here in a minute. Okay. So I normally just put these two rear ones on first. Then I grab my top plate. I'll go ahead and put those in with two screws. And then, since these sandals are threaded all the way through, I just line these guys up here, cut them to size, line them up here, <clears throat> and then get a longer screw. 
That way it can go through the top plate, through this whole standoff, and then into the lower one. That way you're getting a nice strong connection and it's honestly the easiest way to do it. Um, <clears throat> if you're using aluminum screws that don't go all the way through, you know, like it's, I think certain companies are only threaded 10 millimeters into the aluminum standoff. What you can do is just get an M3 grub screw and then um, put that on the end of the standoff. I guess, let's say if they're 10 millimeters deep, get a 20 millimeter grub screw. Screw it all the way into this piece right here and then hand thread that into this. That way you can get a nice, tight, secure connection between those two. there that one's all the way down repeat the same step for the next one I'm actually really excited to fly this myself I haven't this will be the first time I get to fly with the new carbon fiber frame I'll be able to push a little harder on 4S now because that Thick four millimeter bottom plate's gonna should be able to really hold up to the forest power. All right, guys. So as you can see. That is pretty much it. <clears throat> um, let me grab some zip ties real quick. Alright, <clears throat> I'm just supposed to talk about the, the antenna mounts, so we'll go ahead and just get the zip tie, put it through there. And zip that down. Same with the other side. Make sure you get them tight so they don't get all flippity floppity. These are probably a little thicker than what you actually need to use, just what I had laying around. Alright, then, uh, Bring your antennas up. Mine doesn't go very far up. I always go a little past where the antennas stop. Cut it there. Grab the second one. Bring it up. Again, a little past. Cut it there. I want you to some heat shrink. Don't have any long heat shrink, so I'll give you an idea. Get the antenna, feed it through, slide the heat shrink down. I don't have any on me, but you should be using one long piece of heat shrink, it just would be quicker and easier and just look a lot cleaner. Shrink these guys down. anymore I'll just double this up bring it a little past 
again. One long piece would look a lot better than me doing two here, but it's just what I got right now. There you go. <clears throat> now you got the good diversity with the antennas part. Keeps them stronger, won't break. And then all right, as far as props, um, on the old setup I were running just some some Dow uh, 4x4.5s. And it had pretty good performance, but got these. I want to try these out. These are the uh, Dow T4045 Bullnose Tri-Blades. Tri so, go ahead and put these on, and then uh, that's what I'm going to go ahead and try. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that, guys. The, uh... I guess my camera's only set to take 10 minute lengths at one time and it went a little over. So anyway, finished putting the props on. Everything's all good. Mounted the battery with the battery strap. And that's pretty much it, guys. She's all built and ready to go. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to get out and get some flight video to share with you guys. Uh, hopefully you should see us soon on King Don FPV's website. And uh, below I'll put some contact information if you have any questions you want to ask. The owner about that or if any other question about this please feel free to leave a comment down below all right guys keep flying and stay safe